We are back and the modding journey continues on my Sega Master System Model 2. We're pretty much where we left off last time. The case is looking a lot cleaner. It's no longer making that hideous screeching noise when you open and close the cartridge hood. Let's put that top cover off to the side here. What we did last time was install the passive RGB kit from Consoles Unleashed. And in doing so, we now have this gorgeous nine pin DIN on the back where the RF jack used to be. So the system can now output both composite video and RGB using your Genesis Model 2 style cables. We are hooked up to the retro tank. Let's go ahead and get some video capture. Hit record, turn this guy on. And we're looking at a magnificent picture. I think what I'll do in editing is uh, overlay this video capture with the capture over composite video that we did last time, just so that you guys can see the difference. My goal for today is to convert the system from a EuroPAL console to a North American 60 Hertz system. I do own two European PAL Master System 2s and I plan to mod them each a little bit differently. So at the end of the video, I'll go over all the mods that I have planned for each of my two systems. But uh, today this guy's getting an NTSC 60 Hertz conversion. Now, to properly convert this guy to NTSC, there's three areas of the board that we're concerned with. The RGB encoder, the video display processor, and the crystal. That's this guy right here. Thankfully, both the RGB encoder and the video display processor have NTSC modes. We just need to activate them. To make this a faithful NTSC conversion, I'm installing a true NTSC crystal. Most people doing a conversion like this would probably salvage an NTSC crystal from their Sega Genesis, and uh, that'll work in the Master System just fine. But um, I don't want to sacrifice a working Genesis just to harvest its crystal. I reached out to Luke over on at Console 5. I let him know what I was up to, and he offered to program one of these and send it over for me to test. So I think this guy's going to do the trick, and uh, I won't have to brick a Sega Genesis just to make this project happen. Let's start by switching over the RGB encoder from PAL to NTSC. So I have the data sheet pulled up for the RGB encoder. And um, when it comes to data sheets, they used to intimidate me quite a bit. I'm a little bit more confident now to dig in and uh, try and get the information that I need. So don't let data sheets scare you guys. They are technical documents, yes, but Especially on a project like this, this is a dead simple chip. The information that we need is literally one paragraph on one page. So let's go ahead and look at it together. So right on the first page here, it says compatible both with NTSC and PAL systems. So we're off to a great start. On the next page here, we have the pinout of the chip. And if we zoom in on pin seven, it says NTSC PAL in. So we already know that the pin that we're going to be messing around with is pin 7. We can look at the description for pin 7 where it says switching pin between NTSC and PAL mode VCC NTSC ground PAL. So that's the modification that we need to do on the RGB encoder. On a PAL system pin 7 is ground and uh, on an NTSC system pin 7 is going to be VCC which is just 5 volts. We can get VCC or five volts from anywhere on the board. But if we go back to the pinout and we pay attention to pins 12 and 19, both of those pins are VCC pins on the RGB encoder. So what we're gonna do is lift pin seven and tie it to either pin 12 or pin 19. Either of those two pins will deliver five volts to pin seven and toggle the mode of this chip to NTSC. I think what I'll do is remove this capacitor out of the way so that we have a little bit more room to work on pin seven. Just marking what I need to desolder here. Not too fast. I cleared up the wrong two holes. So the capacitor is out, that's good. It's no longer in the way. But uh, this is actually the leg of an adjacent component. I thought this was pin 12. This is pin 12. And uh, I desoldered uh, pin 8. And I need to instead desolder pin 7 right here. All right, I think we're back in business. Let's flip the board over. And now I just need to cut this pin flush with the board. Make sure we're not cutting the wrong component leg here. 
All right, I think that did it. I'm going to try and very gently bend this guy up. Wonderful. Now I need the shortest little length of wire, somewhere about there. There is our miniature jumper wire. Let's feed this guy down the hole of pin 12. Smallest little dab of flux here. That concludes our mod to the RGB encoder. Next, let's go ahead and take care of the video display processor. Unlike the RGB encoder, this chip right here is a proprietary Sega chip. So we're not exactly gonna be able to find a data sheet for it, but uh, people have been modding these systems for a couple of decades now. So we pretty much know everything there is to know about this chip. This chip right here is upside down facing me. So I have a pinout diagram here from Consoles Unleashed and I've rotated it so it matches the orientation of this chip. If we take a closer look here at pin number 57, we'll notice that it's labeled PAL slash NTSC. Looking at the silk screen here, we can see pin 64 labeled on the board. So if we count seven pins backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is pin 57 right here. The way that this chip works, when pin 57 receives five volts, it's set to PAL. So we actually have to ground it to switch it over to NTSC. We can't go ahead and ground this pin without lifting it first. Otherwise, we'd be grounding the entire five volt rail. So let's go ahead and flip the board over, lift pin 57, and then we'll find a suitable place to ground it. I've gone ahead and marked pin 57 right here. Let's go ahead and wet the pad. The pin is moving freely over here. Let's see if we can lift it from the other side of the board. That's what's left of our pin, dropped out the other side. In terms of where we ground this pin, looking at the pinout of the video display processor, I can see that pins 9 and 32 are ground pins. So we have a couple of options for grounding it on the chip, but really you can ground it almost anywhere on the board. So the negative end of this capacitor right here is also a suitable ground. I think I might just ground it to pin 32, and that's this guy right here. I have a short piece of wire here, and I think this is going to be plenty long enough. Let's go ahead and pretend our two pads. Little drop of flux. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Pin 32 is ground. Now pin 57 should be ground, which it is. And none of the adjacent pins here should be shorted, which they're not. I'm gonna go ahead and give the system a quick test before I swap out the crystal. Now for all intents and purposes, this is now an NTSC system running at 60 Hertz, but we are still forcing an NTSC frequency on a PAL crystal. I'm curious what kind of video I'm gonna get like this. So let's take a look and then we'll swap it out. Turn this guy on. We have an image. It's in black and white though. So this is something I'd read a little bit about online and I wasn't sure how my capture card was gonna take it, but uh, that's one of the artifacts of forcing 60 Hertz on a PAL crystal. The picture is cutting out a little bit as well. Okay. My capture card did not like that at all. And there's a very good chance that your TV is not gonna like it either. So um, let's go ahead and swap out this crystal and uh, we'll give it another test. Let's take note of the orientation here, the circles on the top right. Here's our old crystal. Let's go ahead and pop the new one in. There's our orientation marker, top right, in she goes. Okay, let's flip this guy over and solder it in place. Time for what I hope is our final test. 
Time for what I hope is our final test. On. Hopefully that's just the capture card adjusting. Hmm. We still got wonky colors. Not good. Not good. Okay. At this point, I think I need to rule out that the issue is the crystal. So I'm gonna go grab one of my surplus Model 2s, harvest its crystal and uh, test it out and see what we get. I grabbed the ugliest Model 2 that I have. This one's definitely seen better days. And we have ourselves another NTSC crystal. We're back here with the Master System 2. Let's remove that crystal. Grab that Genesis crystal, marker on the top right. Let's pop this guy in. All right, let's solder this guy in. Place your bets, fellas. What do you guys think? Is it gonna work? Same as before. Wow, this thing really does not like this modification that I've done to it. So it's not the crystal. That uh, replacement crystal was just fine. Hmm. So we know it's not the crystal. Let me do a couple of voltage checks around the two modifications I made. So I want to make sure that pin 7 on the RGB encoder is indeed 5 volts. And uh, pin 57 here is indeed ground. So let's turn this guy on. Black probe on ground, and what do we get on pin 7 here? It's 5 volts. And pin 57 here should be 0, which it is. Hmm. I've been researching this for a little bit, and I came across a 10-year-old video of a guy doing this exact same mod to his Sega Master System 2. Now, um, he does it on a slightly different revision of the board, so it doesn't look exactly like the one that I have here, but um, he performs one key extra step that, uh, that I haven't done. For whatever reason, he overrides the internal clock of his video encoder from the clock signal of the Z80 chip over here. Exactly why he does that, I'm not 100% sure, but I did pull up the data sheets for both the Z80 and uh, my video encoder, and um, pin six on this chip is indeed a clock output and uh, pin six on this chip is a clock input if you wanna override the internal clock. He basically removes this ceramic capacitor and uh, he attenuates the clock signal from the Z80 using a 75 ohm resistor. So let's give that a shot and see if we get a different result. I've gone ahead and marked the legs of the capacitor over here that I need to remove and uh, pin six on the Z80 actually has an alternate uh, via right here. So instead of soldering to pin six directly, I'm just going to solder my wire to this little via over here. I'm going to use the fiberglass pen just to expose a little bit of copper. Let's go ahead and extract that capacitor. There's our capacitor. I have my jumper wire and I grabbed a 75 ohm resistor. Now, I'm not going to worry about making everything look great right now because if it doesn't work, I'm just going to put it back the way it was. All right, let's anchor this wire in. All right, we have one leg of the resistor up here. All right, let's flip the board over and let's go ahead and anchor these together. Okay. That's our latest little mod. All right, guys, let's see, record. I'm gonna be really impressed if this works. What the heck, man, what the heck? Oh my God, that's amazing. Wow. I'm so impressed, wow. Shout out to Luke Morse, man, I would have never figured that out. Holy cow. NTSC in the house, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and take that resistor out.
a little bit of heat shrink tubing into the hole it goes. Let's wrap this puppy up. That finally concludes the NTSC conversion of this master system too. We toggled the NTSC mode on the RGB encoder on pin seven. We also apparently had to override the internal clock of the RGB encoder by borrowing the clock signal from the Z80. We toggled the video display processor into NTSC mode on pin 57. Finally, we installed a proper NTSC crystal. And before I forget, a couple of you on my last video noticed that I forgot to do the extra bracing on the passive RGB kit. Good job to those of you that noticed. I'm glad to know that some of you are paying really close attention. So here we go. And there we have it guys, a true North American 60 Hertz Master System 2. All right guys, final test for the camera here. What I think I'll try and do in editing, if I can pull it off, is uh, show you a side-by-side, -side, a before and after the mod, so that you can see any color and resolution changes over composite between PAL and NTSC, and uh, the same comparison over RGB, with the most obvious difference being the speed difference between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. In terms of upcoming modifications for this board, it's gonna be getting the FM sound expansion module. And uh, that's gonna be a particularly challenging project because the Master System 2 doesn't have an expansion port. So there's gonna be quite a bit of work for us to make that happen. And like I mentioned previously, I did pick up two of these PAL Master System 2s and uh, I'm planning to mod them each a little bit differently. So the second unit will be getting a switchless region mod and the dual frequency oscillator mod. If you're not familiar with all these mods, don't worry about it. In each video, we'll go deep on what that mod does, how to go about installing it. So by the end of it, you'll be an expert in modding your master system too with whichever mods appeal the most to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It all seemed really straightforward until we had to borrow the clock signal from the Z80. So if one of you guys has expertise with the inner workings of these two chips and you understand what's happening when we make that link, please let me know. I'd love to understand it a little bit better. And uh, I'm sure it's going to make for good reading for anyone else that's interested as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon. Take care.